Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be doing an auto hockey IDE. And uh, this is a new one that I kind of just randomly, I don't even remember how I discovered this when I stumbled across it. Uh, according to this, it, this post, the original, uh, was on the auto hockey forums 2021. Uh, so I don't know if it's older than that or if this is the first time it's been announced or what. Um, but it seems pretty new if we're going off that. Um, but it's pretty cool because it also does other languages. It is centered around auto hotkeys, but we'll see that. So obviously I will have this in the description below. Uh, it's called Adventure. Um, it's a lightweight, flexible, general purpose IDE, integrated development environment. It's where you code, basically. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> formerly known as Auto GUI. Okay, so I guess maybe it's been out for a while, but it made a shift uh, in, you know, switching over, because I have done videos on some of these uh, IDEs and whatnot. A lot of information here. Uh, if you want to read it, go for it. I'm not going to go over that in the video. Uh, you're going to push download now. Uh, it's going to take you to SourceForge. I know that can be an issue if you're trying to download it at work. Uh, SourceForge sometimes is blocked on certain companies. Talk to your IT department and, you know, they'll investigate, see if you can get it. Um, if not, maybe you can put it on a thumb drive and uh, do that, if you're allowed to. I know thumb drives at some companies are completely banned, but I've done it before and been sneaky about it. And nobody's ever said anything. So I've already downloaded it. Uh, what you're going to get is a zip file, just like this one. Just unzip it. You're then going to get a folder, just called Adventure. So we're going to open it. There's a lot going on in here. Um, all we really need to care about uh, at first, obviously, if you want to explore later, go for it. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, this one. It's the uh, executable. It's called an application here. But it's an executable. It has a little A symbol uh, icon. So we're going to click that one. And we're going to launch it. And launch is super quick. Let me resize this so it looks a little better on this video. There we go. So, yeah, basically you just, you know, type your code. Um, so let's just do some real quick code here. Uh, hello world, uh, and then we'll throw in a return. So as you see, you know, it works just pretty much like any other IDE. Uh, I just push control S out of habit there. But um, let's uh, just kind of do a quick run through of some of the things. I found mostly interesting that I changed. Um, so as you can see, we'll start obvious, uh, auto hotkeys is right here. It's obviously um, centered around auto hotkeys because it has its own menu. Um, but if you go to syntax, you can choose auto hotkeys. So see how it's not uh, got any type of formatting. I can click auto hotkey, and now it's you know got the color and whatnot uh, for all this. But as you see, they have a, a good amount of stuff in here. I mean, they got AutoWit, Batch, C++, JavaScript, Python. I mean, a lot of really popular ones. Um, but you can always go to More. And uh, you can choose what's going to display on there. Um, so there's a lot more in here that just aren't on there. You know, they got like Lua. I did a video recently on that. Um, if you want to clean it up, kind of like, hey, you know, there's a lot on here. I'm never going to use Perl. I can get rid of that off this menu just to clean it up for the languages I actually am using. So that's kind of a, a cool thing to do uh, by starting with just putting out an auto hotkey if that's what you're using. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, you got your options menu here. Um, I didn't really play much with this one. Uh, you know, you got on exit that may be the one you want to change up. And uh, just make sure you click save settings. Uh, auto hotkeys, if we want to run this script, um, you got a bunch of options here, you know, got auto hockey debugger, all that. You can say, you know, run with 32-bit, 64-bit, um, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And let's see. Uh, start debugging. Okay. It's going to ask you to save, basically, is what it wants to do. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, just click on run. It's going to automatically uh, run the script uh, using the memory of pipeline, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and push F1. And yeah, there it did it. Hello world. <clears throat> Let's close the script. 
Um, so yeah, that's how you run it uh, for testing purposes without, as you saw, I didn't even save this. So you can, you know, use pipelining memory uh, to test stuff without, you know, creating files and whatnot, which is uh, really nice. Another one I like is configure tools. Uh, by default, this is going to have nothing in it. Um, so you click that and, uh, you know, you want to add a new tool. So auto GUI is a good one. Uh, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, but you're going to click on this. Uh, you're going to go to Tools, uh, so let's go back to the Adventures folder where we started. You're going to go to this one, Tools. And in here, there's a bunch of tools that kind of have already uh, came built in, um, but you got to add them. Um, you can also find other libraries out there to uh, add more uh, variety to this folder. Just put the you know it in the folder, or at least direct it in the right place. So, yeah, we did the GUI Designer one, which is just called the Auto GUI, is what I named it. We can then click on that, Auto GUI, and I actually did a video on Auto GUI. Um, so yeah, this is uh, pretty simple. You know, we can add a button there, and uh, you know, let's hide that. Oh, look at that! Boom! There is the co code that I can then copy and paste over into here. Now this is done. It looks like in version one, Auto Hotkeys. If you want to code in version two. Uh, I did a video on the version 2 of that. You'll just have to download it, add it to that tools folder, and then link it to this, and it should work just fine. Um, some other ones that I liked that I changed the settings with is uh, Choose Theme. Obviously, it comes in uh, comes in light mode, which I forget what they call it in here. Maybe... I forget which one this was light mode, uh, but I switched to dark mode. You can play around with the different ones to see, uh, you know, what works for you better. But obviously, uh, most of us are going to be doing dark mode. Another one I liked is line numbers. By default, there's no line numbers, and that's kind of a pain for me. Um, so I just, you just click on that real easy. You add the line numbers, you're good. Uh, do you even want syntax highlighting? Probably do. You know, keep that. Uh, zoom, you know, you got that, um, but you can just use control and your mouse wheel to zoom in and out, um, just a heads up on that. Um, the other thing, too, that was uh, a bit different than most editors that I've seen is down here is your tabs for the different projects you're working on. Um, <clears throat> so, new file, so as you see, you switch down here. That one was a little weird for me, which usually is not a problem. Um, but if I'm working on a library that's connecting to a script or multiple scripts at once that I need to copy and paste certain functions from one to another, that one was a little weird to me. Um, I haven't figured out if you can change the layout or not. Uh, I haven't really found anything. So if you find out, let me know. Um, but yeah. But yeah, so this is pretty much just a quick rundown to introduce it to you all. If you guys have any questions, you know, obviously just explore see what all the different you got you know word wraps all that um, you can add little markers um, in case you want to revisit something um, later at um, and there's a way to clear all of them at once I believe just gotta remember where it is uh, but it's somewhere around there um, yeah where is it syntax options I know it's in here somewhere I, I used it once oh I think it's here Mark current line, mark select text, clear all markers. So that's a good way to just clear everything if you want. Uh, you know, you can highlight hello world and uh, put a bubble around it. I kind of like this a lot uh, just because I can use it for, you know, highlighting variables to stick out very well that I may be working on at the moment. So I thought that one was really cool. So yeah, you know, uh, the last thing I want to point out that I... Um, thought was interesting is uh, so let's say I click uh, my cursor right here you can see where you currently are down here it's kind of hard to see probably in this video unfortunately I can't magnify that um, like I can the text up here with uh, what I'm doing right now um, but it says line 3 and then this is cool because most of most IDDs will tell you what line you're on but it also tells you uh, what uh, section you're at so I'm at space three or whatever you want to call it so it's one two and then three <clears throat> so one starts at the the beginning here uh, come on it's coding it's supposed to start with zero but <laughs> it still makes sense but yeah 
All right, everybody, if you like this video, I can maybe expand on this. If you have any questions, uh, maybe we can do a video where we explore, you know, all these different tools that they um, have, because uh, I only really showed you uh, the GUI, but um, there's a lot in here um, to go over. So if you want, hit the like button. If we hit 30, I'll do a tools where I explore every tool that's available in here. And uh, subscribe, always throwing videos out there, hit the like button so I can know which ones you want to see more of. Alright everybody, thank you for watching, I'll see you on the next one.